Hello, um, just a, a couple of um, things to uh, mention just before uh, the second video of Warhammer Wednesday um, starts. Uh, first of all, uh, I've recorded this one a little bit differently. Um, just in the first video, I used a little window in the top left hand corner um, to show uh, the trailer and in this one um, I've done a full screen capture so we're quite interested to see if people prefer the little window um, or the full screen capture um, because I'm going to be doing sort of a lot of different types of videos similar to this and the previous one and um, obviously I want to make it um, so it's easier for you guys to watch and uh, kind of like makes you the experience a bit more enjoyable and um, secondly uh, after recording this video um, I'd put myself into a corner a little bit by um, saying I was going to release these on the Wednesday uh, the guys over at Warhammer did a QA and a uh, last night um, just on kind of uh, which I think highlights some of the things that I talk about and uh, gives answers to some of the things that I talk about in this video um, but um, that's the, the joys of pre-booking things to be um, released. So we're well, good start, Steve. But um, my name's Steve. Uh, this is my channel, No Beef, Just Party. And uh, let's see what James Workshop has to say for himself. Okay, so well, let's see what old uh, Jimmy Workshop has to say uh, about 9th edition. Okay, so I did mention, um, just a quick quick uh, observation, uh, I did mention that this logo was uh, new in my um, previous video. Uh, I think it's the first time they've changed it since third edition when it was kind of like uh, more cartoony. Um, but uh, I like it. Um, it's been getting, a few people have been having a, a moan uh, about it. Um, but um, no, I like that. So. Yeah, it's nice logo. Don't, don't see what everyone's problem is with it, but um, yeah, just wanted to mention. But just wanted to mention that um, what's that? Fifteen years. The logo's been the same. Like it's kind of about time they changed it. You know. And I am here to tell you, yes, you, nine great things about the new edition of Warhammer Forty Thousand. Are you ready? You had better be. Now strap yourself in and let us begin. I love it when it rhymes. <laughs> One, Warhammer 40,000 has been polished to perfection. Thousands of hours of feedback and innovation have refined the game you love into a gaming experience as smooth as a Necron's shiny head. Okay, so um, Necron's shiny heads are very smooth. So where that's a... Um, a direction I think everyone wants the new edition to go in and um, there's I think every codex that came out in 8th edition one or two weeks later there was an FAQ or an errata about like some of the rules so um, having clear cut rules with no wiggle room for exploitation or and people just completely misunderstanding them is kind of what absolutely everyone wants um, with the game and uh, so well, I can't really see people um, having any issue with that that's um, yeah great great to hear Two, the most immersive system for narrative play ever oh, the God. all new crusade system links your games earn buffs experience and new rules for your army it's time to toughen up, kid. Take your recruits from green to me. I like that. That sounds a lot like the Path to Glory um, sort of uh, way to play in uh, Age of Sigma. Um, so, uh, if you're not familiar with that, uh, it's a um, narrative uh, campaign. Um, you have a general uh, that starts off with a couple of units. Um, so the game starts small, and you, as your um, character progresses, uh, gets uh, like says here bigger and meaner. Um, they attract more units, or they hire more units, or they um, sort of get given more units depending on the narrative and who you use. 
and they get, have access to more gear, they have access to more abilities, and um, it's uh, it's just a just a nice way to kind of build an army as well. So I've got my Necrons kind of ready to go, chopping at the bit. Uh, so if I wanted to do, as there's a big green face on there, and I love orcs, um, if I wanted to do an orc army, I'd have a uh, a mega boss and build an army around that. Um, so that to me, as much as I love like competitive play, um, I really like the the vibe that the ITC has, for example, and I just I just like tournament days. Um, I think I would probably lean quite heavily into playing this format. Um, I think it would be a just a really good way, particularly for someone that's kind of quite new to the game, such as myself, um, to be able to um, sort of uh, kind of get to grips with the game quite early as well. So uh, yeah, I'm on board for that. And uh, you probably heard the bin man then. I need to get a soundproof studio. Everyone loves command points, so now everyone gets more. Expect less soup and more super soldiers. Okay. Okay, so um, it's interesting that they used the custodes in the picture there, as I think they're quite notorious for struggling to get command points without the use of soup. Um, if you're not familiar with the term, uh, soup is when they you chuck in units from a uh, another faction that you can ally with. So uh, with the custodes, for example, it would be, um, I think people would probably try and sneak in a detachment of Imperial Guard somehow to be able to kind of up their command points. You can then spend those command points on different abilities to kind of uh, get your army working and um, sort of uh, adapt to your play style and things. Uh, it'll be interesting to see how they do that. Will everyone start off with the same? Um, I don't know. <laughs> so um, we'll uh, hopefully uh, hear more about that soon. Four. Tanks are back on track. Your armoured behemoths been getting bogged down by pesky horrid rots and squishy gaunts? No more. Okay. Tanks can shoot in combat. Blast foes at point blank range and keep on rolling. Okay, so um, I know that is, oh, I found that, always found that a bit of a silly rule. So if um, you had a big old tank and one way for it to be kind of taken out of action would be for your opponents to just kind of swarm it with like grunty units. Um, it wouldn't make sense that that tank couldn't shoot just because there were people in front of it. Uh, so I think that, yeah, that, that, it's a sense. Sorry, it's a rule that makes sense. Um, so yeah, it's a rule that makes sense. Um, if you run a horde army though, that's not something that you'd be too chuffed with, I don't think, as it is a legit, at the moment, with the way that the rules are in 8th edition, it is a very legitimate tactic for you to tie up heavy weapon t um, tanks with um, people that you didn't particularly have any interest in using in the game. Um, so, um, you know, that you would just have units for tying up tanks. Now, you probably want to build your army a little differently if that's the case as that tactic has completely gone but um, it's it's a rule that makes sense to me um, I think people might be a bit divided on it though um, the people that are going to be annoyed are going to be the horde people the people that are going to love it are going to be the people that have 50 layman rushes sitting in a box at home uh, so um, yeah uh, but uh, I think that's it I think it's a good move terrain's been rebuilt Want to defend a building, getting bonuses while you do? Absolutely. Want to sneak up on your opponent using terrain to block their line of sight? We've got you covered. Want to run screaming at your opponent with your chainsaw raised and a hymn to the Emperor on your Yes, wrist? yes we do. Not completely relevant to this <laughs> section of the video, but also, yes. <laughs> so, um, I like the sound of these terrain rules. Um, yeah, you, you, you hear it in every game store. Uh, people are playing against each other, and someone says, "Oh, I can see, I can see this person's hand. Therefore, I get to shoot him." Um, I think that you know, changing that and having something kind of more solid in there, 
think is definitely good. I'm interested to see how that kind of sneak attack rule works. Um, I think using terrain to be able to kind of sneak around the board um, it sounds good for me and to be able to kind of use that those tactics to flank people um, are they changing the line of sight rules as well uh, so is it going to be kind of like a, an x-wing style line of sight um, that's going to be interesting oh, that would be quite hard to police though without the use of templates and I don't think they want to have Templates or anything like that, so maybe that won't change. But uh, we'll see. We'll see what they have to say. Six. Warhammer forty thousand at every size of game, from lunch break combat patrols with your new army to crushing your friends beneath the iron boots of your full collection. We have balanced the scale. Seven. I like the sound of this. Um, as someone who predominantly plays smaller skirmisher games, um, this appeals to me quite a bit uh, it is quite intimidating for someone who's quite new to play a game of 40k that's 2000 points because there's so much on the table so many rules to remember that having the smaller games I think like for someone like me anyway and uh, for newer folk um, it would be good uh, you get to grips with the game quite quickly um, you get to grips with those I'd imagine for the smaller games you'll need a HQ unit, you'll need like a, a couple of other like grunt type units and then maybe you can chuck a vehicle in. Um, so you can have those kind of like core elements. Um, that get, ties in quite nicely with the idea of that crusade campaign by the sound of it as well. So um, yeah, I'm, I'm on board for that. Um, if you want to play the massive um, 2000 point games, brilliant, you still can, but um, having smaller games um, like it, like the sound of that one. Seven. Tactical power at your fingertips. Strategic reserves have changed, allowing you to strike your enemies from all angles. Since you're the cleverest general among your friends, time to prove it, sunshine. Hit him where it hurts. Eight. Don't know what that means. Not gonna lie. Um, so it's when they say strategic reserves, I assume that's when you able to hold back people to bring on at a later date uh, or deep strike and stuff like that um i guess if those rules need polishing brilliant uh I, yeah i assume that gives you more options to, they're going to be giving you more options to have someone hand solo in like on the third turn and be a hero uh, <laughs> that type of thing uh but yeah i don't really know what they mean by that so um yeah let me know in the comments what you think about that if uh if I'm missing something completely obvious, uh, do apologise. Big guns never tire, and firepower feels great. Explosive weapons deal maximum hits to hordes as they swarm across the battlefield. So bring your favourite guns to the party and get the job done. It's time to have a blast. Okay, so that's um, a rule again that I think they bring in. They bring in, which makes a lot of sense. So you have, they had the Imperial Knight there, which is a massive model, loads of big Vekov guns, and unloads his guns into your 40 Gene Stealers and misses. That shouldn't happen. Shouldn't miss. Yeah, like, it just shouldn't miss. Like, you just should hit what, it, what you're shooting at um, in that kind of scenario. So, um, yeah, but how are they going to? Are they going to bring back templates? I don't know. No, surely not. Surely they're not going to bring back templates. Surely there's going to be a a chart of some description. Um, so if there's this many, if there's this many things in the, um, there's this many units in the squad. Um, this weapon will hit, hit between this and this. You may you'll probably still have to roll dice to see how many you automatically hit and then roll for wounds or maybe yeah maybe just straight up roll wounds and depending on the size of your you the size of your squads that's how i figure i don't know i don't know i'm i'm spitballing absolutely nonsense because i'm, <laughs> I'm still relatively new to the game but uh yeah i guess just automatically hitting and then rolling for wounds Makes sense. Um, again, not good for horde players. 
oh, two renewed armies aren't going to be knocking about much, are they, at the start, I don't think. Um, yeah, that does, again, a tough one for, for Horde armies, but I think, um, again, it's a rule that makes sense. You shouldn't, with those big weapons and things like that, on a, on, if it was on a battlefield in real life, you wouldn't miss. So uh, it's a rule that makes sense to me. Soar across the battlefield, ignore intervening models, and return for another attack run. It's time for aircraft to feel. Aircrafty. Pew pew noise is optional, but highly <laughs> recommended. So, pew pew noises, um, I will constantly be making, so don't worry about that. Uh, so, um, I, I, the flying rules, I've not played any game. On the handful of games that I've played, I've not played any flyers. It's all been like a ground assault thing. So, and I did get a little bit confused when I was reading what my scythes would do and how they would interact with the rest of the board. So hopefully this is going to be quite clear and quite um, kind of easy to understand and flows well with the game, kind of like more importantly, and doesn't make flying your units like massively overpowered because that would, that would be rubbish. Uh, but um, yeah, I think it... I like the sound of that they can fly off the board and come back and do another run because uh, i think at the minute they fly off the board they uh they're, they're dead so um which for a flying unit i guess that's kind of silly and um, i think at the minute again this is probably something that kind of goes against horde armies because again a, le a legitimate tactic is for you to kind of position your dudes all over the place so that you the flying unit can't technically land so it ends up having to fly off the board anyway um but uh we'll see we'll see what they introduce with the rules for that but uh, i think yeah coming soon so yeah that's that's the lot um there's that funky logo again um surprised you didn't mention the app in that video uh they're gonna be releasing an app a uh, 40k um, list building app which I think you could put all your codexes on that you have all the rules will be on there in theory everything should be uploading automatically for the stuff that you own when they do an FAQ or if rules change if points change things like that um, in theory this is a great thing but these things are only great when they work properly and I think a lot of eyes on this working properly are going to be um, kind of snooping at it. Um, they have an app for Warcry. It's not very good. They don't update it at all. So um, hopefully they'll be able to keep everything updated that way. But uh, anyway, um, nine great things about the new edition. Um, yeah, they're all really good. Uh, I think I'm quite excited about it. Um, waiting for more news just to find out when it's out and uh, obviously more news about all those um, models and things so um, if you want to kind of keep up to date with my Warhammer Wednesdays then uh, do give me a follow um, The I'm going to be doing kind of like other like Warhammer content as well as I do play um, Underworlds and I do play Warcry so um, there's going to be those type of videos but uh, on a Wednesday I am going to try and keep them uh, kind of 40k related just kind of keep to a schedule uh but um i do have uh, an underworlds video so if that is your jam i'll put the thing up there uh but um yeah thanks for stopping by uh feel free to follow me on twitter and instagram same name no beef just party but uh, thanks for uh, watching and uh, hopefully see you again real soon thanks a lot cheers <laughs>